So good morning, everyone. Uh, so as Andrew mentioned earlier, the center is uh, looking into the development of membranes, but also uh, in that of adsorbents. Uh, so I wanted to give you a brief overview of the activities of the center around uh, the development of adsorbents today. So our activities are divided into three uh, main areas. The first one is looking into the development of multifunctional materials. Um, and by this, I mean we want to go beyond only developing materials that can separate uh, molecules, but we want to add the possibility to uh, catalyze a reaction as well. We are also looking into tuning adsorbents across different scales and also providing a multi-scale approach to the development of adsorbent. So an adsorbent must exhibit different properties going from, for instance, capture capacity, selectivity, cost, robustness. So we want to, and, and an experimental approach is not enough to uh, determine what is the best materials in order to achieve all this. So we are collaborating with people doing molecular simulation as well as process system engineering in order to more quickly come up with a material that is efficient for a given process. So working in those uh, different areas, we need a different um, set of skills and tools. Uh, for instance, we need material synthesis skills. So we have researchers that have background in, in organic and organic chemistry as well as material science. In order to fully understand how uh, our adsorbents behave and what makes them efficient or not efficient, we need to fully characterize them. So our researchers have access to a number of analytical, spectroscopic, and imaging tools. And finally, we need to be able to test those materials for gas and liquid separation, as well as catalysis. So we are building different uh, testing rigs, and you may be able to see some of them this afternoon during the lab tours. So what are the materials we're working uh, with? Well, the first uh, part is 3D porous materials, and an example of those are meta-organic frameworks, uh, or MOFs, and those are probably the archetype of structured adsorbent because of the high porosity and their crystalline structure. In addition to 3D porous materials, we're also working with 2D nanomaterials, such as, for instance, uh, graphene oxide, which is an oxidized form of graphite, we have also uh, boron nitrides, uh, which is very similar to graphene, except that the carbon atoms have been replaced by boron and nitrogen atom, which gives an enhanced uh, thermal and chemical stability to the materials compared to carbon-based materials. If we replace the uh, boron atom in boron nitride by carbon atom, we obtain carbon nitride, which is uh, a photocatalytic material. So looking into the first area I mentioned earlier, which is the development of multifunctional materials, I want to give you the example of two projects we are currently running. And one of them is the development of materials that can not only adsorb CO2, but also convert it into chemicals via a photocatalytic process. So the idea here is in the first step to have material that will efficiently adsorb CO2 from the flue gas and then use the energy that would be used to regenerate those materials in order to also convert CO2 at the same time. So for this, we're developing adsorbents that have also photocatalytic properties. An example of those materials are shown here and they are composites of carbon nitride nanosheets as well as meta-organic frameworks. So you have here, for instance, TM images of those materials where you can see the composite, the, the two components of the composite that are mixed at the nanoscale. They have a maintained high porosity, as you can see from the nitrogen sorption isotherm, and this enables them to act as adsorbents. We have investigated their photocatalytic properties and show that we are forming a heterojunction with an efficient uh, charge separation. And this enables the composite to actually perform better than the parent materials when we look at the photocatalytic degradation of organic molecules. So the next step for us now is to employ those materials for uh, CO2 capture and conversion. Another um, project we're working on around the theme of multifunctional adsorbent is the development of materials for combined water purification 
and the production of energy. So here we're using metal organic frameworks to act as adsorbent to remove organic contaminants from water and then behave as photocatalysts to degrade those um, contaminants and form CO2 as well as hydrogen. So we can envision this process as part of a modular unit to be used in remote uh, location to not only clean water but also uh, produce energy. So the Adsorptive capabilities of MOF have been very well documented, but the photocatalytic properties are much um, less known. So we're investigating this and seeing how we can tune the photocatalytic properties of MOF by changing their uh, ligand or the metal that we have. Uh, so that's what we're currently doing, and we're also testing those different MOFs for the degradation of different organics and looking at the production of hydrogen. So in addition to that theme around multifunctional adsorbents, I mentioned that we also want to tune those adsorbents across um, different scales. And one um, of those scales is the scale at which we're using those materials. Obviously, we want to produce material that we can use at an industrial scale. If we take the example of MOF, they are mostly produced in the form of powders, and powders are of little use at an industrial, in an industrial setting. So, here we're trying to make MOF more usable and we have recently worked into uh, producing composites of polyhype and MOF. So polyhype stands for polymer synthesized with high, em high internal phase emulsions and we uh, can produce them in different shapes going from monoliths to beads and those can be useful in an industrial setting. So we have incorporated MOF crystal within those polyhype structure as a way to confer adsorptive properties. Finally, the last uh, theme I mentioned earlier was our multi-scale approach to adsorbent development. As I was saying, a purely experimental approach is not efficient when we want to um, identify the best material for a given process. And this is because we have a number of criteria to fulfill going from capture capacity, selectivity, robustness, cost, and also we have a multitude of uh, potentially promising candidates, especially when we look into MOF materials, for instance. So we are performing um, molecular simulation to screen a large number of materials and come up with a smaller subset that we can then uh, synthesize, characterize, and test. And both of those uh, results can then feed in and can be provided uh, to process system engineers that can then identify which of those uh, different materials have a potential for application at an industrial scale. And in return, they can provide experimentalists with target ranges in terms of capture capacity, selectivity, et cetera, that we need to uh, fulfill. So we can go to the lab and design a material that will uh, match those different criteria. So I think that's all I wanted to say for the uh, adsorbent theme, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions a little bit later on during the day. Thank you.